What's going on YouTube, Marine X back at it again. EDC stuff for your vehicle. I've talked about the emergency equipment I keep in my vehicle. Let's talk about EDC tools that I think you should keep in your truck. At least they work for me. You don't have to copy this verbatim, but you know, mine have been working out for me for years. This is my EDC toolkit for 2023. Yep, it's a big boy. My tools are kept in a Pelican case, the BX80. You guys have heard my BX50. That is where I keep my emergency equipment. I mean, I just, I can't get enough of these cases. They're easy to mount. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about all that good stuff later, but this stores all my tools. This may seem excessive. I drive a 2015 GMC Sierra with a standard bed not a short bed so i have six feet six inches of bed space i got plenty of bed space to kind of do as i see fit and i usually just tend to put stuff however i want to so one thing i like about the pelican bx80 the bx50 any of the bx boxes that they're they can be mounted side mount top mount you know so this is mounted directly to the molly panels within my truck built right industry that allows for me to, while this is mounted against the side bed of my truck, I can literally open this thing up and access all my tools without moving my toolbox. So the first thing we talk about is what's not in there. So these gloves are hanging on the outside of my uh, Diamondback cover. I can grab these very quickly. I don't want them to get lost in the sauce. So Flex Impact, I got these from Home Depot. I would just recommend any type of gloves that are gonna allow for you to take pinches from like boats or pinches from like if you ever had to work on a tire or a, a brake caliber or a hood or whatever, pinch points, protect your skin and your phalanges. Next thing in here is a little bit of duct tape by Gorilla Glue. Now this duct tape specifically is used for any type of emergency if a you know, if a fender or something like that on my truck were to come off or come loose, then I have a little a ton of duct tape. I had the bug shield before on my truck come flapping up, come out, strap this down to the hood, make a quick repair. You never know when you're going to need something like that. I do keep a Metabo Mata box in here for a couple of reasons. I love the Metabo Mata box system. This is a part of the sustainer system, which is a part of Festool, Makita, Matabo, a lot of different tool brands all dedicate themselves to use the same shape and functionality of toolboxes so that all their systems lock together. What do I keep in here specifically? This is the Matabo Matabox 215. In here, I do keep a couple of things that I like to use pretty often, but just in case. Now, these items are mostly used if I were to go to someone's house or something like that. So, kind of just a top down a little photo of what all that stuff looks like. I do have Metabo's 12 volt system when it comes to their drill driver and their impact. So this one is Metabo's uh, hammer drill 12 volt and their impact 12 volt. These things work great. Keep the actual batteries in here as well. I usually don't keep them connected to the tool just in case that I need to charge them, but I keep two batteries in here. Step down a uh, drill bit in here so that I can create different size holes if I need to, if I go to someone's house. For whatever reason, I always, instead of keeping a bunch of drill bits, it's just a lot easier to keep that in here. Then I do keep drill bits specifically. So I do have a quarter, a three eighths and a half inch socket adapter in here, which is super important. Basically any bit you could think of, square, hex, slotted, T's, etc etc so full kit all impact rated which is great so i do keep extra hex bolts in here which i've kept these in here for a couple years this is the second set i've bought you never know when you need to just come and figure out working on the inside of your vehicle and you had no clue that you were going to have to finagle something try to figure something out and just make something work and that's kind of what this is beneficial for going to someone's house and be able to find the boat. The very bottom of this, I do have the actual charger for that drill impact in its entire case is nice and neat because it allows for me to keep everything nice and organized. I can keep the batteries in here and drill bits in here and just kind of put everything in here how I see fit. 
So this is what I normally have to grab when I go to someone's house besides screwdrivers, et cetera, et cetera. So that's normally here. Enough room in here if I needed to grab a few other items out of this kit that I can go right in here. All right, so next thing we keep in here is a Tekton 3H inch dry set. Nice blow molded case. This is a full set. Does have a, a fantastic um, actual ratchet. And I use these um, basically handheld, but you know, if I need to use it with a 12 volt impact, it's just not that big of a deal. I'm not gonna be snapping anything or tearing anything up. No skips. This thing goes from eight to 19 with no skips. And it goes from five sixteenths to three fourths with no skips. All right, so next thing here, if I ever had to drop my axle for whatever reason, if I had to take my entire um, axle or if I had to do some major work to my vehicle, which has happened one time, I do keep that specific size in my toolbox. This is a one and three eighths lug in here. It's impact rated and I can throw this on. I can use a breaker bar first. If that doesn't work, you know, then most likely I'm going to have to get some help, but at least I have the tool and that makes it a lot much easier to grab some, get some help if I needed to. You never know when you need a soft mallet to gently tell something that you needed to begin to work immediately. A Tekton soft mallet in here to, if you ever need to, you know, give it some words of encouragement, um, that's important as well. Here I do keep a boulder tools. Now this is not directly a part of my emergency kit for my vehicle. I do keep it in my tool kit because it's less likely I'm gonna use it. This is a pretty bulky kit. Now what this allows for me to do is to actually put, uh, to put a tire repair kit so if I needed to plug a tire, I can do that. If you ever get something like this, my recommendation is to practice. If you can find a spare tire or something like that and practice actually inputting these things inside of your vehicle. You know, so if you ever had to make that repair. Also, if you buy a kit like this, make sure the kit that you get has metal actual applicators. Do not get the plastic applicators because those can break off and stab you in the hand. All right, next, I keep a serpentine belt for my vehicle in my vehicle. I know that sounds wildly, insanely crazy, but listen, when I was a younger man, I had so many crazy things happen that I never thought, hey, you know, I, I don't need that, or I, you know, there's no need for me to have that. Yeah, there was, you know, I've had tires fall off of cars, I've had serpentine belts snap and, or almost snap, it looked like they were about to crack. So it just, it's nothing for me to just keep a V-belt or keep a serpentine belt in my vehicle, ready to rock and roll. I already have a breaker bar in there with a half inch on there so I could uh, you know, take this off the alternator and route this all together and just have a peace of mind. I would hate to be on a long trip and my serpentine belt's about to snap and not, not to have one on me, so I keep one in here. Also in here, I keep a pair of leather gloves. These have never been used. They're here for mainly for if someone were to ever help me do something. I can give them a pair of gloves, kind of keep their hands safe or if my main gloves were to begin to wear out excessively, then I do have a extra pair of gloves. All right, next, I keep screwdrivers and Allen keys. I keep it in this nice canvas uh, pouch here so that I could just look inside, grab the entire thing, and this has um, slotted, and it has Phillips. It has some Allen keys in there, some hex keys. So, I mean, there's not a high likelihood I'm gonna need these, but just in case they are here, they're easily accessible and I don't have to go digging around the entire toolbox. I can just clearly see that they're labeled. Twist ties, listen, twist ties for your wires. If you need to do some stripping or some, you know, you always have a pocket knife on you. If you ever had to strip down some wires, then you wanna be able to put those wires together and make a temporary connection so that you can get back, maybe do a solder connection when you get home. So twist tires, super important if you're gonna be under the hood of your vehicle or maybe even like in the floor panel or your radio or your maybe your AC unit. I've had this happen in a Cadillac before. Literally, the fuse went out on my AC unit. I pulled it out too quickly, put out the fuse box too quickly and I stripped some, some actual, uh, I put out some cords, some wires and I was like 19 at the time. So I had to go for the remainder of that day. It was like 104 degrees where if I would have had something that would allow for me to just strip some wire and connect them, I would have had AC for the rest of the day. So now I keep stuff like this in the vehicle. All right, so I do keep a headlamp in here as well. This is by Heads Up Light. This is a Pelican product and it's made in the USA. I don't think Pelican makes lights anymore. At least they haven't made it in a while. I've had this thing for years. I wish Pelican would come up with something for this case that would allow for me to hang stuff on the inside. Maybe I'm gonna have to maybe buy like a Billwright Industries Molly panel set or something like that and put it in here because I would prefer 
this headlight to be more accessible because it does find its way down when I'm driving to the bottom of my toolkit. Tape measure, I mean, if you ever have to measure some crap, tape measure. This is a tape measure I like specifically, one of my favorite, mainly because you can write on the front of this thing with pencil and then you can take and just literally erase it and write on this thing again and just re reuse it over and over. So that's pretty fantastic. I also have some thread locker blue. You know, if I had to make any major repairs to calibers or to some type of bolts that I don't want to back themselves out on the side of the road or while I'm driving down the road, keep some of this on there, throw them on some threads. Hands down, if you don't keep anything else in your vehicle, you know, I would say at a minimum, keep yourself socket set, screwdrivers, ratchets, but keep a magnetic pickup tool. This thing's a, a, a telescoping pickup tool. This is going to allow for me to, if something falls into the, my wheel well of my truck or something like that, or into the, the, you know, if I'm underneath the hood of my truck, this will, at least for me, give me a fighting chance to try to get that item. This by Craftsman. And these things are relatively inexpensive. I think I got this thing for like five bucks. Extra wire. Now, this is red. Normally, we use this for a power source. But when you're in an emergency situation, wire is wire. You saw the actual twist caps earlier. You know, I got some of this in here. So if I needed to make a repair to some type of wire inside my truck, I do have wire in there as well. All right, so we do have some anti-seize in here. So we saw the thread locker, anti-seize just in case I need to put this on the back of a brake. Listen, I'm always thinking about crazy stuff on certain boats, back of brake calibers, etc., cetera, et cetera. You need anti-seize. If I'm having to do some type of repairs, I keep it in my vehicle. And if the directions or whatever I'm working on call for it, I have it. It's so small. It doesn't, the, the, the weather doesn't really affect it. It's always here and it's ready to go. Why not keep it in here? Pair of goggles. I mean, if you're going to be doing some type of work, why not keep safety goggles? You only get one pair of eyes. You might as well protect them. A breaker bar. This is a half inch breaker bar. This is by Blackhawk. This is a made in America breaker bar. I don't think they make these anymore. If I any of this stuff, man, I'll try to link this stuff up down below. Great knurling on the end. It's really decent size. I think it's about 15 inches, something like that, but plenty of leverage. And so I can use this to take off that serpentine belt, you know, loosen the lugs on my truck, et cetera, et cetera. Then we also have a full set of deep sockets. This is a 15 piece set. Goes from 10 to 24. I do, do think there are a few skips. Let's see, 10, 11, 12, no. actually no, there are no skips. So this goes from 10 to 24, no skips. My truck requires a 19 to take off the lug, or excuse me, it take, requires a 21 to take off the lugs. So I have that, but if I were ever working on someone else's, I would probably have everything I needed in here to make that happen. Now my 12 volt Matabo impact is not powerful enough to, it's not nut busting, I'm not gonna be able to, you know, use that to bust lug nuts, but the breaker bar, I can bust it and then I can use the 12 volt to just finish taking the lug nuts off. Makes life a little bit easier. All right, next in here, we do keep a pry bar, a larger pry bar. I've had this thing for a very long time. This is a Vaughn pry bar. This is also made in the USA. I don't know what, when, how long ago I got it. I just know that if I need to use leverage for something, this gets the job done and I've, I'm not letting this thing go. Been using it for years. Next thing, we do have pliers. This is also an, another one of these canvas style bags, literally labeled pliers, tons of pliers inside of here, whether it be tongue and groove or, you know, needle nose. I have some very old Knipix Cobras in here, just whatever I'm gonna need to possibly give myself leverage, give myself different options, adjustable wrenches, all that type of stuff is in here. So a big bag of pliers. So hopefully I have between the, the pliers and this next item, I'm pretty much good to go. As well as the pliers, I do keep a full set of open wrenches in here. And these go from a one fourth through one inch. And then from seven, I think all the way through 22. There are skips. But this is basically going to get the job done for whatever I might need, whatever I'm, I'm taking apart. If I need to just put some back pressure or to hold a butt while I'm driving in a nut, you know, this is basically everything. I mean, the most I mostly use are going to be the 10 and the 13 millimeter is most widely used. So um, but I mostly use this when I go to people's houses talking about that wiring and stuff. I'm, I'm just so paranoid. I need to keep bigger 
fuses in here. I do have a uh, some blade fuse sets in here and it does have multiple different sizes. I need to buy the bigger sets to kind of go underneath your hood, the big fat, you know, like the 30 amps, et cetera, et cetera. It has a puller in here and tons of different fuses. And there's only so many spare fuses that come with the manufacturer that, that they give you. Maybe some of those are blown, maybe some of them don't work. So keep some spare fuses. It's gonna suck when a fuse goes out that can be a comfort type fuse, like your radio or your AC, uh, your entertainment system, whatever. If it could be replaced, why not just replace it instead of waiting around until you get back to your destination? All right, so that is it. That is my 2023 EDC toolkit that I keep in my truck. This one is mine. There are many like it, but this one is mine. What am I missing? If this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you a part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, thank you for watching me run my great. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.